But we begin tonight with the one-man conspiracy promoter, also known as Tucker Carlson. Up until Monday, Tucker hosted one of, if not the most watched cable news shows in the country. But his ouster from Fox wasn't just any old firing. Tucker presented a unique danger that was unlike anything else we've seen in American cable news history, almost exclusively using his one-hour slot to peddle the worst of the worst conspiracies and authoritarian propaganda to millions of Americans, to the point where one of the most prominent people who came to Tucker's defense after his firing was, I kid you not, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Perhaps it would be useful to consider how things are with freedom of speech in the United States. I've heard that Tucker Carlson has left Fox News. It's a curious news. What is this related to? One can only guess, but clearly... The wealth of views in uh, the American information space has suffered as a result. Now, if it was anyone else, the idea that a senior Kremlin official would be defending a United States TV anchor, at the United Nations no less, would be unbelievable. It would be unheard of. But because it's Tuckums, it's not even surprising. It is no secret that his show was the Kremlin's favorite Russian state TV. The, uh, its favorite. Russian state TV would frequently air clips of Tucker defending him, defending Putin, especially after the invasion of Ukraine. And almost immediately after being ousted by Fox, Tucker was even receiving job offers from Russian state TV. But it wasn't just Russia. Tucker also wielded tremendous influence over the Republican Party. It was often Tucker who took some of the most fringe and most dangerous conspiracies that you would find in the darkest corners of the interwebs and inject them into mainstream Republican politics. He was essentially the 4chan to Capitol Hill pipeline. The most egregious example being the great replacement theory, between railing on a show about how immigrants are making our country dirtier while claiming there is no such thing as white supremacy, Tucker would ramble on for 20 minutes at a time, promoting the conspiracy theory that immigrants are being brought in by the Jews, of course, to replace native-born white Americans, which prior to his show was only popular on white supremacist internet forums and tiki torch marches where khaki-wearing Nazis chant, Jews will not replace us. But not long after Tucker brought the tiki torch march indoors to the Fox airwaves, you had almost the entire Republican Party embracing that theory, including Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who tweeted, Tucker Carlson is correct about replacement theory as he explains what is happening to America. During his campaign for Senate, Peter Thiel backed Trump sycophant J.D. Vance told Fox that Democrats, quote, have decided that they can't win re-election unless they bring a large number of new voters to replace the voters that are already here. That is the kind of talk that would get a lawmaker expelled just 10 years ago. But thanks to Tucker, it's now standard Republican talking points. And then there's January 6th. Tucker took the lead when it came to writing a revisionist history of the insurrection with the help of Kevin McCarthy who handed him and no one else 40,000 hours of footage from that day, which Tucker selectively edited in order to frame the angry mob that attempted to overturn the election as meek sightseers. But Carlson's former producer, Abby Grossberg, told the great Nicole Wallace yesterday what else he tried to do with that footage. When the January 6th tapes were coming out, Tucker was very set on finding an FBI person who was implanted in the crowd and spinning this conspiracy that they were ultimately the ones responsible for the Capitol attack. I went back to them and said, look, there's no conspiracy theory here. I called this attorney that's representing one of the Proud Boys, and he flat out told me on two occasions, there is no conspiracy. Get away from this stuff. This is dangerous. Tell Tucker to stop. I'll come on your show and represent my client, but I absolutely will walk off if he asks me this. And the response was, well, find somebody else. Tucker is really intent on this. So let that sink in. The host of the most watched cable news show was intent on framing the insurrection as an FBI conspiracy. Think about how dangerous it is when right wingers have already previously threatened and attacked FBI offices. But none of that seemed to matter to the Fox executive suite. Nope, none of it. What actually pushed them over the edge, according to new reporting from The Wall Street Journal, 
was his, quote, vulgar and offensive messages about them and about his colleagues that were in the redacted portions of the Dominion filings, including the time that he called a senior executive at Fox the C-word, according to people familiar with the matter. Talk about only caring when it happens to you and not to your fellow citizens or to your country. Well, now, Fox has a decision to make. Since whoever they put in the anchor chair at 8 p.m. will be watched by millions of Americans, regardless of who they are. So will Fox stick with the brand of vulgar, white supremacist and Kremlin talking points that Tucker brought them? Or will they take it in a different direction? Joining me now is Jelani Cobb, dean of the Columbia University School of Journalism, staff writer for The New Yorker and MSNBC political contributor, and Nicole Hemmer, political historian and professor at Vanderbilt University. Uh, thank you both for being here. Professor Hemmer, I do want to start with you because this is uh, kind of your field of, of, of expertise and study. Um, my colleagues, Brandy Zadrozny and Ben Collins, have written a piece that I just want to read a little bit of. Um, there's a right-wing fringe you know, writer who says that Tucker was basically the only person at Fox who would dare to have me on. I'm not the only case. There are other people and nobody would dare to let them or any other Fox show, um, let them on any other Fox show, but Tucker would have them on to say things you wouldn't hear anywhere else on American TV. And that his relationship um, with these fringe voices was like mutual. Um, far right people could actually get on. Another little bit of this, and I think I'm reading the wrong thing that was up on the air. I'm sorry. Once a story reached Tucker Carlson, it was at the apex of conservative media. And Fox News is the voice of authority in conservative media, said Robert Ferris, senior research at Harvard University Shorenstein School of media. If it let other people know that it is okay to talk about these kinds of things in the language that they use, that, that it's not just on the air, it's ambient. It's on so many public spaces. And that means that anything they platform has a wider reach. Talk a little bit about this, because that seems to be what Tucker really did, is he took wild stuff off of 4chan and mainstreamed it. Right. This was the power of Tucker Carlson's show, was that it was a pipeline from these various parts of the far right into a more mainstream right-wing platform, one that wasn't necessarily so strongly associated with racist conspiracy theories, although Fox is not, you know, it's not new that there is racist content on Fox News. But, you know, he had writers like Blake Neff, who was ultimately fired for posting pretty incendiary and racist content on a far right and openly racist website. And Neff bragged about the fact that he was able to use Carlson's show in order to get this material out there. So this was a, a powerful platform, not just for Tucker Carlson, but for this far right racist white uh, white right. Let me let me read just one more part. This is the part that was on your screen just a moment ago. Sorry about that, y'all. I read a little bit extra. This is another part of that same uh, piece that I just read. White supremacist message boards, which frequently watched along live with Tucker Carlson's show, were overloaded with posts lamenting his firing. Tucker's one of the last our guys, wrote one 4chan user, referring to a meme among white nationalists to identify fellow travelers online. Bad times coming, Anons. Uh, be, been obvious for a while, but it seems to be reaching its apogee, another 4chan user said. To stay with you one more moment, um, uh, Professor Hammer. The white nationalists, the white right has been trying to get inside of the mainstream Republican Party for a long time. They, they, they picked at the Tea Party because they knew there was a lot of anti-Obama white resentment there. They picked at the Trump sort of MAGA movement. It does seem that Tucker was an accelerator for mainstreaming, specifically white supremacy and white nationalism, um, particularly when it comes to the replacement theory. He absolutely was. I mean, Fox News was seen as a more respectable platform. Remember in the Obama years that other journalistic outlets would stand up for Fox News whenever the Obama administration criticized it because they saw those journalists as they saw the people at Fox News as fellow journalists. I think that's not really the case anymore. Um, and Tucker Carlson actually had a big role to play in that as well, because exactly because he was so overt about his white nationalism and about his racism. Yeah, you know, and Jelani, I'm glad that you're here as, as the head of a journalist department, because I think that's you were, you were nodding um, when Professor Hammer was saying, you know, journalists used to defend Fox News. You know, I have colleagues that would defend sure. them and say, you know, you can't go by just what's on prime time. But this taints all of what Fox News was supposed to be, because there was no editor, no executive who was willing to stop him from doing that. The only time they stopped him and fired him is when he insulted them. Sure. So one thing to, to keep in mind is that the reason that journalists defended Fox News, especially in the Obama era, was that they were defending a portion of Fox News that they could identify with, which was the news gathering organization, which is fairly normal, fairly standard organization. Now, it had a right ranging from right to far right opinion uh, section 
And you know that was the programming that people were most familiar with in prime time. That's not entirely unusual, but in most of these setups, including the setup that we're on now, the opinion uh, element is uh, follows the news gathering. That people right. will interpret the information that the news gathering, uh, you know, side you know, develops. But in on Fox, and this is what the Dominion case really brought out. It seems to have been inverted. That people knew information, uh, they knew what was true, uh, but they also were in the business of catering to what their audiences wanted to hear. So it was the opinion, not the news side, that actually led. Uh, and so on the heels of that, you know, with that being exposed, they were vulnerable in a way that they weren't otherwise. I think were this these uh, text messages to come out in some other context, I, I don't think that you know we would be seeing the the demise of Tucker Carlson as a Fox News host in the way that we're seeing it right now. Thank you.